Welcome back to Marvel Maniac, an MCU after show. This is Eric Cicada, your host, a.k.a. Mr. Honest. Hope you're having a great week. It is so good to be here with you today to talk about the second episode of Loki. The episode is called The Variant. Now, we learn who the variant is, and it may be a pretty big surprise to some of you. It was a pretty big surprise to me, Um, and it was a kind of a nice turn of events. We had a lot of information in this episode. We dug into some uh, reveals about maybe who the antagonist is going to be for this series, Um, some hints, some nods, some twists, some turns. Uh, We're going to cover it all in this episode of Marvel Main. And MCU after show. I did my watching of the episode a tiny bit different today, um, uh, just to experience the episode a little bit different and how I take my notes. So, um, if you experience this episode in terms of like how um, I'm reviewing it to you, let me know how you thought about it. MarvelManiacPod at gmail.com. Um, you can throw us a tweet at MarvelManiacPod. And we really like a positive. Uh, constructive review. Leave your hate at the door. We uh, we are just all human beings trying to get along and make it by. And that being said, let's get into this episode. Well, right before we do that, I will address that last week I referred to the Falcon and the Winter Soldier as Hawkeye and Winter Soldier, which I had also done one or two times before I reviewed the series, which I can't just help but laugh at, <laughs> just um, because, you know, it's such a big series, so much happens in it, and I covered the whole thing, but then, like, you say you, you, you say the sentence Hawkeye and the Winter Soldier, and then it's not even that I got it wrong, but I like to think of that series, like, what if that were a series? Um, um, that'll be a whole different show. <laughs> and at the same time, I really blotched that <laughs> for any first time listener. Uh, if they, I wonder if you guys caught that. If you did or didn't, uh, or if I offended you, or, or maybe you got a chuckle, or you didn't realize it, and now I'm revealing that to you. Um, I find it silly. Okay, so we start this episode at the Renaissance. And we almost think we're back in time for a minute. It's the Renaissance Fair in Oshkosh, Wisconsin in 1985. Now, I started taking these notes in a little more detail until something happened. Um, This show, this show's captivating. I, and this is kind of how I started my podcast with WandaVision, my watching. Um, I got so swept away watching this show that I, I had to do this. Uh, you know, what I usually do with taking my notes is I'll be, um, I'll watch a s- scene and I'll take notes and then I'll pause and then I'll take notes and then I'll pause. Uh, I can't do it for this. This show is so captivating. Um, I had to like take it. I just had to stop the notes and just watch the show. And then I had to go back and like kind of work my notes and um, write bullet notes. And I think this show is so captivating. It catches me so much. I I almost don't need as big a point by point notes. I think I could just go off of what the bullet points are. And we'll see. um, And if you notice a reasonable difference and you're annoyed about a slight style change here, I'd love to hear your notes uh, as well, fans, uh, fans, friends, uh, Avengers, uh, maniacs. Uh, In the style of the show, if you are a fan or not fan of style change, we're, we're not changing much, but and that, that's the last you're going to hear about this in this episode. Four minutes in, we're going to go down the episode notes from here on out. A portal appears, and Minutemen walk through. Uh, C-20 is stamped on this guard's armor. This is the leading guard. She walks right past a lady. Uh, this is just like this lady who's just working at the fair. She tells them they aren't dressed right. <laughs> Some of us need the Renaissance Fair to get by. Like in life, a thing like the Renaissance Fair in the 1980s, there were there weren't things like Comic Con. I guess so. Like the Renaissance Fair was the Comic Con of the 1980s. Is my is my guess. C20 moves into a tent. It is dark and lit with lanterns, and also filled with bleachers. One guard mentions that there's no sign of Nexus energy yet here, ma'am. 
uh, view focuses in on a speaker, on a post. A very loud announcement goes, my lords and ladies, welcome to the, <laughs> welcome and thank you for joining us here at the castle. Please settle into your seats and a great battle is about to commence. The prize, our princess, will evil prevail or are we holding out for a hero? I wrote that it sounds different than Loki. In my opinion, I thought it was going to be like an older man version of Loki. Uh, at the piano riff from the song, I Need a Hero, starts to play. And the song, I Need a Hero, starts to play. I believe it's from Footloose, most commonly, in my opinion, known from Shrek 2. Uh, okay, already hell of a show on our hands. A glowing green fingertip reaches out from the darkness. Touch a C-20's temple. Um, Her eyes briefly glow, and she removes her helmet. She kicks a team member's leg, and she kicks him down. Uh, Another Miniman looks over, and she picks up a jousting pole and whacks her teammate with it, jabbing her in the chest just as the hooded figure attacks from behind. Dropping the jousting pole, C-20 takes on another Miniman, punching him and throwing his own baton to his neck. He asks her, what are you doing? And she tells him, just having some fun. Uh, She smiles very evilly and passes out. Her teammate is checking her pulse, and as he's doing that, he checks over his shoulder, and he notices a hood in his I thought man behind him. And I think Mobius did too, because he says, I want to catch this guy at one point, I noticed. He stands face to face um, with this, as we soon learn to be, lady, uh, woman. <laughs> he charges at, at her, but gets stabbed by a huge blade. The hoodman, uh, hooded man yanks off the minute man's reset charges. I keep, I'm going to write, I'm just going to read what I wrote so it's easier. <laughs> then uses uh, actions on an orange rectangular device and presses time door. Uh, he drags C-20 through the time door just as I Need a Hero ends. I need a hero! Wow. There, a little visualization for you. Loki. Um, I was making sure that the end, like, credit, like, end Loki fonts didn't change, and they didn't. So, I don't think there's any symbolism in the fonts in terms of them changing per episode. So... So this is this is an episode, or I was going to say just a show. I'm going to get swept away in every scene. And um, it's not that the dialogue just doesn't matter in every scene. It's just that for me to write down every piece of every single dialogue, it's just, it's so, every piece of every single dialogue is so amazing. And for me to chronicalize every single, and for me to reenact every single piece of dialogue from all this show, um, it's almost like you just watched all of that, and I don't need to re, re-say every line. I can hit bullet points and lay my thoughts down on them more or less, in my, in my opinion, than... Um, Requote every single line um, And this is just me Putting out there how I can do these shows As we go here um, So like this is almost at the point where I like Kind of started watching the show I think And um, we get back My notes become a little more um, A little less Quotey and a little more Bullet pointy um, We get Loki at his desk And he's working in a cubicle Reading a jet ski magazine <laughs> you know, just regular old jet ski magazine. And at first, I, that was my first note. It was kind of funny. Uh, getting Nexus lessons from Miss Minutes. Uh, what happens when a Nexus event passes red line? Uh, Loki says very bad things. Come on, Loki. What is it? It's when uh, the TVA can no longer reset a Nexus event. Now, this is important dialogue. Because this is clearly setting up the end of the episode. And maybe possibly the conflict of the series between, well, Loki and the Timekeepers, the Lokis and the Timekeepers, and the multiverse, setting up the multiverse, what seems. Loki um, (laughs) says it's boring, uh, right, and that would lead to the destruction of the timeline and the collapse of all reality as we know it. Uh, Loki asks if... uh, that's what Miss Minute says. Loki asks if she's recording him, and he swats at her, and she hides in his computer. Miss Minutes is very uh, a very funny little little quirky character, but it's also like almost like uh, she's like a spy, you know. Mobius shows up and lets him know there's been an attack. 
he gives him a uh, TVA jacket. Loki's looking spiff. Uh, but, you know, he doesn't know uh, it says variant on the back yet. Now, our favorite uh, Minuteman who brought Loki in, um, the big, our, our, our big brutal officer, uh, fills in uh, the team of Minutemen on the situation beginning of the episode with C-20. She says, all signs point to another ambush. We've grabbed enough temporal aurora to know it's our Loki variant, but which kind of Loki remains unknown? The lesser kind, to be clear, (laughs) says Loki. Every Loki is going to think that they are the best Loki. That's in Loki's character. So that's what's going to be very funny about any Loki running into another Loki is that they're going to challenge that Loki in thinking that they're the best Loki. Yeah, I absolutely love that. So, uh, she tells him to let her see the back of that jacket, and he turns around, and in big orange letters, it says, Variant. There's a slight chuckle in the room, and he says, Very subtle. Well done. We don't want anybody out there to forget what you are. Uh, Mobius says that when they are out there, they are not only looking for a time criminal, they are looking for a Loki. You should be familiar with this because the TVA has pruned a lot of these guys, almost more than any other variant. Well, this part's kind of cool. Um, I'll say why in a second. And no to our alike. Slight differences in appearance and not so slight. So this is when exactly when he's pulling up little images of the other Lokis from the other dimensions. This is what is maybe a little confusing to me. Um... Are these other times in history when Loki has slid off the regular timeline path? Like, is this Loki really the main timeline one? And how did this Loki ever slide off to being that other mega Hulk one? (laughs) Is my question. Different powers, although powers generally include shape-shifting, illusion projection, and my favorite. And Loki cuts him off, duplication casting. Loki explains how the two are different because illusion projection involves depicting a detailed image from outside oneself, which is perceptible in the external world, whereas duplication casting entails recreating an exacting facet smile of one's own body in its exacting present circumstance, which acts as a true holographic mirror of its molecular structure. But you already knew that. Uh, Loki is so cocky. Mobius says that they will break into two teams, including himself and Loki. When Loki asks him why, Mobius says that they need an expert to find this variant. And Loki says, well, that's pretty much me. (laughs) Um, On their way out, Loki asks if he will have a weapon. And Mobius says yes. And Loki realizes that's his magic. Um, He asks if he knows uh, how Mobius won't use... Like, Mobius knows how Loki won't use it against him. And Mobius infers that Loki doesn't want to mess up his chance to meet with the timekeepers. Um, this gets Loki's eyes glowing instantly. Uh, so they arrive back at the Renaissance Fair. Loki asks why he can't go, but like they can't arrive back in time before the attack. Like back to the time travel rules from Endgame. Um, it's not that simple. D- different timelines. Uh, he says, reset charges prune to the affected radius of all branch timelines, allowing time to heal all wounds, uh, which why, which by the effect, well, it sounds like a nice way of saying disintegrate everything in its vicinity. Uh, so that's like, you know, what Loki was made to told, like, by his training. They were asking if he read it, uh, read his training manual, pretty much, and he had to tell them that. Um, so in this... In this uh, tent, Loki wastes everyone's time by doing like his own investigation, and he tells them he knows what's going on there, and just just to get Moby is to give him like a one-on-one meeting with the time uh, keepers, uh, and just so he like he says I have crucial information, but I'm going to have to talk to them. Um, so this isn't doesn't look very very good for Mobius, um, and it doesn't also doesn't look very good on Loki. <laughs> Mobius and the judge from the first episode, which I know has a name, and she she totally um, is back in later, and we will I have her name written down later. Um, really great actress and great chemistry with Mobius and Loki in the first episode, and I think we're going to get to know her better and better as the series goes. And I think things start to unfold with the Time Variant Authority. I think we are going to learn some dark things about this place and it might not be all comes to seem it i don't know it's almost like they're putting that more in our face this episode than i would have expected them to after thinking um being a little suspicious of them last week but loki did kind of put it into our minds that 
they have the mindset he does so as a dictator so they're dictators and hence they're not all so great and we don't really know what they are and that's explored a lot in this episode this may be the only chance we really even get to see their inner workings for all we know we don't know how long loki's going to be out of there if not the whole rest of the series very interesting very very interesting so um they um she tells loki that this is the most invested the timekeepers have ever been invested <laughs> this is the most invested the time timekeepers have ever been invested in a case okay then uh of a variant so you need to get this resolved and if we see the end of the episode it's making me pull my collar out yikes uh <laughs> <laughs> um, these timekeepers are about to be very angry. She argues with Mobius how bringing this Loki uh, variant into the field is just extremely dangerous and almost uncalled for. And Mobius says that this is how he's getting to learn how Loki asked and uh, act and get in Loki's head. And um, this is going to help him get to the bottom of this. And eventually um, they'll catch one another doing the same thing. It'll help him he's just gonna help him figure this whole thing out um and it's not the worst idea if you think about it also mobius says he's never met the timekeepers just they're also they were brought up so much in this episode multiverse of madness has definitely been getting into form and um, i'm wondering this that's probably how Monda is hearing your kids um this is forming all throughout just in the background of the uh, mcu uh, Mobius reminds Loki he wasn't talking last week in that elevator, and now he won't stop talking. Uh, Loki is compensating for his mistake, and Mobius ridicules him. And, uh, he says he doesn't care what makes uh, makes him. He doesn't care what makes him tick. Loki asks why he's sticking his neck out for him, and Mobius says he just wants him to catch this guy, no matter what he needs him to say. Mobius needs Loki's unique Loki perspective. I remember that from the trailer. Loki's studying in like the upper deck of a library, and he's having a shushing battle. Just very similar. It surprised me a little bit of WandaVision, where like you just see Vision in situations like a mockumentary you never would expect him in. Loki goes down deeper into the library of sorts, and I can't, and he can't get anything, anything out on the start or end of time. So a lot of information is suppressed. I don't know if it's just because he is a variant, but I think it's just giving vibes that there's a lot of information you can't get a hold of. You're not allowed to know anything here. But he is allowed to have his own file. His own file. So he gets to read everything on his own life. Learns of Ragnarok. I love being able to see Loki react to his own life. If He didn't even get to see... He's reading the events of his own movie in closer detail than we have ever gotten to. Um, actual casualties of Ragnarok. 9719. I don't know if that's including all those soldiers. Uh, probably. I don't know. I don't know. Um, he finds out that there was also zero variant energy detected. Which leads him to believe the variant is hiding in apocalypses. He brings this to Mobius, uh, and he doubts that this is, he doubts that this is first completely, but he shows him via salad, Loki, like a complete salad example. Mobius is so pissed at this, and I love how, like, Mobius just doesn't even want to deal with Loki at this moment at all, like, even when, if it comes to, like, him having an answer, he just wants to eat, and, uh, yeah, I love their chemistry so much, uh, Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston. For the win, Owen Wilson deserves this, and I hope, hope, hope Mobius makes it out of the series. Loki wants to test it, and Mobius says Loki would stab him in the back if they went out on the field and did this together. <laughs> uh, he's like, Loki, you betray people like fifty times. <laughs> how am I supposed to? How am I supposed to trust you? Uh, Loki insists he won't do it again, <laughs> and he loves it. Uh, he loves being right. That, that's the point. So, well, how do they test it? They go all the way back in time to Pompeii. This this episode has timelines. We go we go all over the place. Pompeii. Very funny scene, but also slightly messed up because they're like they're all gonna die anyway. <laughs> that's fu that's messed up. Um, 
Loki goes all around the town and um, pretty much announces that uh, everyone's gonna die and uh, to, to leave and that volcano is about to blow up and it does starts blowing up and uh, I assume they get right out of there but it's a very quick scene but it's really well executed Mobius comes back to the TVA to announce Loki was right about the variant hiding in Doomsdays. Now, Loki is falling asleep at a table investigating, and Mobius wakes him up. Loki asks him about the jet skis and why he had the magazines. Uh, Mobius tells him how awesome jet skis are, and and uh, Loki asks, like, why not? Just why just read about them? And he says, well, it's, it kind of reminds me of what we're what we're working for, what we're fighting for here. And uh, Loki again questions the TVA. He's like, do you, you really believe in this? These three giant lizards that created you? And uh, Loki, and he's just like, well, who created you, Loki? And he's like, well, the ice giants and Asgardians. And, and he's like, yeah, that sounds just as crazy. That sounds just as crazy to me. And it gets you thinking even a little bit, too, about your own human existence, right? <laughs> and... Uh, he says, existence is chaos, and I'm just happy that the chaos I was born into gave me this, my own glory, pr- glorious purpose, because the TVA is my life. Genuine, very genuine, uh, this character of Mobius, which makes him very redeemable for anything he could do in alignment with the TVA. TVA. I'm going to call them the TVA because it sounds weirdly right. But whatever he does in alignment with the TVA, uh, it's hard to get angry with him because he's just so convicted in what he's doing, he, and he's not. Um, he's just if they're wrong, he's just brainwashed into it, and it's hard to dislike this man. Very likable character. Um, so Loki asks how it all ends and what the timekeepers uh, are waiting for and Loki says Mobius was wrong for calling him a scared little boy earlier and he says Mobius is wrong because he knows something children don't <laughs> he's wrong for a lot of things um, I might have written that wrong <laughs> no bad no one is ever bad and no one ever is truly good uh, this gives Mobius a revelation to look at the blue gum from the last episode, Kablooey. Uh, this gets them to realize that the disaster to look at is a hurricane in the future to 2050. Mobius gets approval from Ravana. Ravana, Ravana, Ravana. The judge from the last episode, Ravana. <laughs> uh, to bring a team to that apocalypse event. He tries to give Loki his daggers, uh, Mobius, and the security Minuteman uh, says, he said, absolutely not. <laughs> um, maybe he should have had him? I don't know. This is, this is a sticky situation they go to. They went, uh, they know the variant has been stealing reset chargers and to look for them. Uh, we are officially in the future, okay? 2050. Has this ever happened yet, people? In the MCU? No. We don't get future. That hasn't happened. The Minutemen enter outside from the rough storm. Loki dries off with magic, which gets uh, our main guard a little jealous. She stares him down for it. Uh, Mobius wants to split off with Loki, but the imposing women insist he go with her. They run into a guy uh, shopping for plants. This is immediately sus. Uh, Loki's like in the middle of a, a hurricane. <laughs> Loki's really funny in this, like more funny than he ever was. Like and it, it just almost a little too much, Ugh, but not really. Like he's good. It, it's fun. I, I laugh a lot at it. Uh, she asks Loki if that's him, and he says yes, maybe. He grabs the guard's hand, and she turns around and says, So you're the fool that the TVA brought in to hunt me down. So um, he took over her. So more mind control stuff happening here. This is when Mobius finds C-20 on the floor uh, in an office, who is saying over and over again, It's real. It's real. Over and over and over. Uh, the Loki variant takes over an employee, then, by telling him she thought he was actually a threat Loki says he wants to overthrow the timekeepers. He offers variant Loki to do it together. 
Um, she refuses as Randy, the store clerk. Um, it's hard to be <laughs> mix up the he's and hers when um, the female variant Loki is switching bodies very, very smoothly. Very cool. Very cool move. He refuses and uh, she says that she's not interested in ruling the authority. Back to the room at Mobius and C20, she's telling them, I gave it away, the timekeepers, and how to find them. So some people know where the timekeepers are. That's not all confidential to everyone. Um, and now, I guess, that Loki knows. So that's going to be very interesting to look into next episode. I'm very curious to find more, uh, find out more about these timekeepers. Uh, very interesting, very interesting. The other Loki becomes a big burly guy, and they have a big stressful fight. Um, there are vacuum parts used. <laughs> Loki force pulls an object into his hands and throws it. Um, this this burly guy throws Loki through a huge toy display. Um, he's setting all the charges by the computers, and Loki asks, "What do you want from me?" And what is this all about? And uh, she tells him, brace yourself, Loki. The hooded figure shows up behind him and takes off the hood. It is a female variant of Loki. This isn't about you. The countdown hits zero and we see engage. The store goes dark. Reset charges activate. Dozens of charges fall through portals on shelves. The sacred timeline is shown and the center is making calls all over the place. It's like, somebody bombed the timeline. Somebody bombed the sacred timeline. Like, And you see like that chart of the timeline. Like The red lines are just sinking and sinking and sinking. Is that the multiverse of madness? <laughs> um, Minutemen charge out of the door uh, like, in, like an army of them. We see Ravana, the judge, and she's sitting in her office realizing this information, looking terrified. She's probably in very big trouble. Very, very big trouble. Lady Loki grabs the time door key thing and uh, opens the time door and walks through it. And Loki follows. Mobius screams uh, for Loki to stop, and he uh, he doesn't listen. And... Uh, that's it. The episode ends. That is our episode. Now, this episode went by much faster. I felt like this was a very freaking eventful episode. Um, I I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. And the fact that a, lo a long episode can go by that fast just says how speaks for how good the episode actually is. All right, so I'm going to go to the Marvel R Reddit Marvel Studios. So reddit.com slash r slash Marvel Studios, one of my favorite subreddits, 1.7 million Avengers there. Uh, I have been on this subreddit four years. It was created July 14, 2012. I have not been there since then, but um, it was really, really fun uh, being a part of the subreddit since at least Infinity War been before. And I love picking and choosing some of my favorite comments sometimes from the uh, people of this great subreddit and seeing what they have to say about the episode. So let's go some um, of the top comments on here. Um, Matt Murdock. Uh, oh, no, it's not Matt Murdock. His name is Gambit08. I'm really digging this Catch Me If You Can movie vibe. Fits perfectly for Loki and the TVA. I completely agree. In reply to that, Hell Knight said, The craziest part is there are now two rogue Loki variants playing Catch Me If You Can. Can't wait to see how they interact with each other while both evading the TVA. Each variant always uh, trying to one-up each other. You know, that is absolutely true. And like I said earlier, it's completely funny that they're mirroring each other and one Loki is going to completely think they're the better Loki at all times. Um, it's in that Loki, it's in Loki's nature to want to be the better Loki. Every Loki thinks they're the best Loki. Uh, which is what I love. Uh, I wonder how different these two Lokis will be. Uh, and it, it's super exciting. I, I'm not going to watch any trailer episodes. Uh, I have episodes for the next trailers for the next episodes i usually don't like to so whew, i get the chills just wondering where it can go next week kmc underscore 39 road i hope mobius and loki ride off on jet skis at the end of the series <laughs> what an episode uh these first two episodes have been everything i could have asked for and uh, more thus far can't wait for next week i agree kmc 
Uh, I like how I'm acting like these are letters to um, Marvel Maniac, but I'm just reading off my favorite subreddit because I like to uh, find other thoughts from other people. At this point, it's really cool to just read other fans' thoughts and put them out there on the my sh- on my show. And I hope that's okay with these wonderful people. Um, I haven't asked them, <laughs> but I'm reading them off a public site in a public domain, and I'm putting all the credit. Uh, so I hope that's all right. Uh, and that is a really, really cool thought. Um, in my opinion, if they reuse the, um, I need a hero song at the end of the show too, I wouldn't be super mad. Um, and somebody else said that, uh, John ton 120, the multiverse of madness begins. Yes. Uh, I agree. Right. Uh, Nain Ron Rogers uh, replied, honestly, I feel like an idiot for not associating something called the multiverse of madness with Loki or some variant of him to begin with. Um, I, 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 me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> That's I, 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 I love this. It's so exciting. This is so exciting. Where are we going with this? Everyone? What's happening with Loki? <laughs> um, all right, we're gonna we're gonna like leave this one like a short and sweet, wonderful episode because I'm a little short on time today. But I will see you next week for episode three of Loki, where we will break down every single minute for you, and we will see what this new female variant Loki is all about. If you enjoy the show, please rate it or review it. It would mean the world. Uh, please leave hate or extreme negativity at the door. Uh, we're growing and learning, so constructive criticism only. Um, any uh, tips or donations, Mr. Honest Podcast at gmail.com on PayPal, um, marvelmaniacpod at gmail.com for any other inquiries. Um, We would love to see you next week for episode three of Loki. Until then, Avengers, disassemble.